Hello, welcome again to the field where, in this field, it's all been cut, which makes it an interesting subject. Whereas this field, the cows are there. So I figured, let's fly around the hay bales and see what's happening. We have got the Runcam Fun Pro mounted on a five inch. Did a bit more printing to get some uh, mounts there. I've also got here a uh, little five volt regulator board uh, to basically power the camera through the balance port so I don't have to wire things up to the light controller. So um, yeah, this is the Nazgul 5. Fun cop to have flown for a while. It's only on free sky, so no big distance, but there's plenty of fun stuff to do out there. So let's check it out. Just before we get into flying, I realized I kind of glossed over the uh, the mounts I was using. So I thought I'd do a quick close up. I've printed a TPU piece here, specially designed for the Nazgul 5, which basically makes a GoPro style uh, mount. And then this is the mount I didn't use last time, all in TPU, so we've got some movement on both the pieces, which will hopefully absorb some of the uh, vibrations. Uh, and this is the piece, this was uh, suggested by my friend Bob, thanks for that. Um, although he got it, for, I think, from a Joshua Bardwell video. This was designed, I think, for people with naked GoPros. The idea is you plug this in the balance port, it's got a five volt regulator. This would normally have a USB C attached to it. I've hacked that off and put the regular run cam thing in, so I just need to attach that to um, my balance lead of the, of the battery when I fly it, which is a little bit. Um, you've got to think about how you're going to put this and, and make sure you know it's strapped in tight. But if you're moving about different quads, certainly better than having you know to go and solder in your flight control. If you were putting this on the same quad and flying every time, then I'd say you know solder it in and just leave it there. But yeah, this would be quite useful if I want to move it about. Anyway, back to the flying. Just before we get into stabilising the footage, what I wanted to show you is the first flight I did and what the raw footage looks like. And I've got my OSD in the corner because, of course, from my point of view, I can't see any particular shakes. It looks pretty damn smooth. Now, I suppose it's fair to say there's a caveat to that. And when you're dealing with lower resolution, it's obviously much more difficult to spot the very subtle little shakes you might have, which which do tend to you pick up on much easier in HD. Although I tend to think that that would result more in a blur on the OSD footage uh, when you've got these sort of rapid shakes. Anyway, what you get from this, and again, this is pretty difficult to see unless you're watching it in 4K um, full screen. So hopefully YouTube hasn't butchered this because when I look at it in my edit window, it looks pretty good. But you can see there's, you know, bits of shaking. Um, it looks like there's sort of a constant vibration that's being transmitted through the camera and it comes out worse when we're sort of going along the field and we, we've got the throttle up you can kind of see it wobble about a little bit more there so what I did I went in and I stabilized that footage in much the same way as I did before this is 2.7 K at 60 and I went in and used the same sort of default parameters that I did previously now, when we start off here, apart from the, the weird zoom, it all looks very promising. It starts off looking very smooth and a vast improvement once again on the original. But this was my first battery and when I started off, I was sort of going quite gently. I hadn't flown this quad in a while. I was kind of feeling it out a little bit. But as soon as I started, you know, putting the throttle down, then these shakes kind of creep into the stabilized stuff. It's kind of weird to watch and unfortunately it makes the shake stick out more because you get elements of where it's very smooth and then other parts where it's really shaking about like gyro flows making it worse essentially, which sort of makes me think back to the original run cam fun where the sort of gyro data it was generating was not right. Uh, it was all over the place and that caused it to to you know come up with some very spurious results now in this camera i know very well that the gyro data looking back at what we got on the little two and a half inch cine whoop was was very good it was very accurate so what is up with this one what is causing gyro flow to not be able to handle the data I, I say handle it. It, it sometimes it looks good other times it doesn't but the bits that don't look good really stand out and you really do notice that sort of flickering jerkiness sort of shakiness of the footage 
So to try and understand what's going on, let's jump into Gyroflow and have a look at some of the data from this flight. Okay, so here we are in Gyroflow, and this is from one of my flights from the previous video where I was flying the two and a half inch quad. And I wanted to show this because this is something that seemed to work pretty well. And if I was to have a look at the data here and just say zoom in on one of these points, you can see that although the gyro goes up and down, uh, we're able to kind of follow the points uh, as much as possible. Let's grab another point, do the same sort of look there. And again, it, there, there's up and down from the gyro. It's not completely uh, without noise and we could we could change that by adding a low pass filter but generally speaking the optical data follows the gyro data pretty nicely and there's not too much uh, going back and forth. I should mention as well this I noticed there was a new version to gyro flow out before I did that bit of stabilized footage I showed you and one of the key things they've got now is um, official profiles for the Rancam Pro. One of my friends uh, sent me a message saying he couldn't find the same one that I was using. It seemed to be unavailable for Windows for some reason. But this one, it comes up as tagged as official. So if you download the new version, hopefully you get that. I did run the entire thing through. Um, it didn't get any better. If, if anything, it was slightly worse. But I, I think the reason for that is what I'll show you now. So let me load up the clip that I stabilized before. Uh, and here it is, and you can recognize it from bits and pieces like this. And this always looks pretty good when you look at it in Gyroflow because it's it's a lower resolution, you, you don't see it as much. But if I zoom in on one of these sync points, the amount of gyro vibration we seem to have on every axis is much, much bigger. Um, I mean, we could get rid of that. If I said, let's add a low pass filter, uh, 50 hertz or even a bit high even like 100 hertz it would look a lot better but it doesn't take away the fact that we, we've clearly got some shakes um, in this frame and th that's what the gyro data is basically doing it's showing the vibrations that are going through to it so I just don't know if this can be fixed that's the problem and I've done a lot of different things I've tried changing some of the dynamic zooming and differences to smoothness. I've gone into the second smoothing thing. I've changed the different types of stabilization. Um, I've done all sorts of different things. I can't get it looking any better than it looks, unfortunately. So it didn't go so great on a five inch, but where did we go from here? Do we accept that the Runcam Fun Pro and its previous model were only good on sort of the whoop style up to about two and a half inch or do we look for other avenues that we can do to make this better? One thing uh, suggested to me is that the two part mount is the problem. So the wind gets this and the shake is basically induced by the fact that we are flying faster and we're getting some shake in that way. In which case, is there an all in one mount for this, for this frame? Currently the answer is no. Um, I'd have to basically try and design my own, which I could maybe do. I don't think it's too bad, but it would still have what is essentially going to be some sort of um, thinner part here which could flex more than the others but that's perhaps worth a go. The other thing um, I noticed about doing these videos with the previous Run Camp Farm and this one is that many people said I'm getting much better results from you can I have a look at your footage and have a go with it so I thought why don't I put it out to you guys because I am by no means an expert at trying to get the best footage out of this stuff so I thought if people that um, have got good results before can have a look at mine and if they get good results or bad results they can feed back uh, and if they got good results tell me how they did it then I could share it with everybody and uh, we could have like you know a, a cheap but good camera that you could put on any quad not just a, a little one because I think that's ultimately what we all want um, it's great having this to go on cine whoops and stuff but essentially if we can have something that can film I say 4k you don't want to use 4k because it's 4k 30 something that can do 2.7k at 60 frames a second and looks pretty reasonable once you stabilize it uh, for like under $100 then there'd be a lot of them sitting on five inch quads because it's it's not no money but it's a lot cheaper than smashing up an expensive GoPro 10 or something like that. Anyway if you look down in the description below I've included two links to some zip files 
The first one has the original run cam thumb, not, not this one, because there were a lot of people saying, I'm getting great results, let me see your data and I'll, I'll do stuff with it. So if you're old school and want to look at the original, look at that one. There's also one for the Pro, which is the the same footage as I've got, I've showed you a bit of. Unfortunately, in, in order to make it complete, you'll have bits of my stupid face looking over the top of my glasses, old man stars. It, this is what I call the, is this on look, as I'm trying to switch this on. But if you go ahead and do that and see what you guys can do in Gyroflow, I'd love to know your results, good or bad, um, are equally important. If if you think you can do something with it and it turns out bad, I still want to know about it because it says to me, okay, what other people are getting good results on aren't necessarily working here. And then it perhaps comes back to the mount and can we soften that at all? There's a limit though, you know, we don't want to start inventing, you know, elaborate mounts to make it much softer because it sort of adds time and effort and more fragile things can break again. So there's a balance here, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, anyway, have a look at that footage. If uh, if you've used Gyroflow before, let me know if you get anywhere. In the meantime, I will attempt to make some sort of mount that looks a bit like this, but is an all-in-one thing and, and see if that works any better for us. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.